placed on his head. He knew that he would soon be dead. He said, did you forget me, Father, did you? They nailed him to a wooden cross. Soon all the world would feel the loss of Christ the King before his heart. to die, then lifted his face up to the sky, said, I am coming home now, Father, to you. A reed which held his final sip was gently lifted to his lips. He drank his last and gave his soul to glory.
of our birth, flood of God's riches, poured on the earth. We are born from the darkness and clothed in the light. We are bathed in the glory of God. Fountain of mercy, grace flowing free, streams of salvation, In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, welcome to the third Sunday of Easter. God called us and gathered us to celebrate His presence. We acknowledge our sins and beg the Lord for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, Word of God, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, Messiah and King, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, bread of life, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the Sold forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of your adoption, we may look forward in confident hope for the rejoicing of the day of resurrection to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad and my tongue has exulted, my flesh too will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus, of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Nor will you 
suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conducting yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a spotless unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from <clears throat> Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. 
One of them named Cleopas said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us that they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As he approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But he urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said a blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Praise Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> My dear friends, for this um, third Sunday of Easter, we hear the account of the narrative of the Emmaus experience. The disciples were leaving Jerusalem, going to a village seven miles called Emmaus. After the resurrection, many of the disciples were really scattered because Jesus is gone. Some of them didn't really know um, what to do. Some of the apostles went back fishing, you know, went back to the original profession. And that is why Jesus has to appear to them many, many times in order to remind them of their main mission. And Jesus there is constantly instructing them because he will leave and then they have to build the church. Now, this account of the Emmaus experience will teach us two things. First, on how to relate with God. Why do we need God? 
What is the best way to relate with Him? And second, this relationship is essential for our survival on this planet. We have been repeating this because people cannot yet get it. That Mother Earth is teaching us something about our behavior, about how fragile we are, and to really tell you honestly, it will only take 200 years for planet Earth to erase every trace of humans on this planet. And so our survival here is essential that we have to learn from the wisdom of Mother Earth to survive here. So let's go step by step. First, what is the best way to relate with God? You know, God gave us faculties and powers. There are two which, things by which we can relate with Him. First, through our minds, we can know God in a very limited way because our mind is too small. We cannot really possess Him completely and contain Him because, you know, like the experience of St. Augustine who was a master in the Trinity and theology and he wanted to explain the person of God and he was walking by the shore and he saw a small child digging a, like a hole and from the sand and he, uh, he has a pail and he was taking water from the shore and filling it into the hole and Augustine said, what are you doing? He said, I'm going to put the whole sea into this hole. And Augustine said, that's funny. The sea is too big. You cannot contain it. And the angel who was really the child, the angel told him, you are more funny because you want to put the whole trinity of the whole God inside your small coconut. You cannot do that. So our minds are limited. You know, this is a good uh, answer to those intelligent people, scholars who try to question the faith, question everything from their researches, from their, and they find out that they cannot prove because the mind is like that. It's small. It's limited. Our knowledge of God through the mind is only about 10%. 90% of our knowledge with Him is not through the mind. It's through the heart. It's through love, the foundation of faith. We can know God through the heart. So it's pointless to question and to uh, make arguments and use all kinds of logic and all kinds. Of, this, this will not work. Even our research are limited. But the key to relate with God is to walk with Him and to listen to Him. That's what these two disciples were doing. Although they were not aware that it was Jesus, but they were walking together. And because of that walk, they recognized God. That's what St. Augustine said, you know, when we were students in theology, about how love and the heart can inform the intellect. He said in Latin, crede ot intelegas, believe first and you will know. And then St. Thomas Aquinas, fides querens intellectus, the heart faith informs the mind. The heart first. 
walking with God. And then gradually you will open your eyes and you will recognize Him. When some St. Thomas Aquinas uh, finishes a lot of volumes of the Summa Theologica, he was in prayer and Jesus appeared to him um, from the cross. And St. Thomas said, I can throw away all these books. The most important thing is that now I am face to face with God. That I've come to believe Him because of love, not through these uh, arguments and all this research and all this. Uh, it's to the heart, walking with God. Now, why is this necessary in our lives on this planet? Because, you know, we human beings are so fragile. The reason why we have religion, because we are powerless before the big forces on this planet. We are scared of the wind, the water, the seas, the earthquakes. They are so strong that we are so tiny that we can be erased by this. And so we started looking around, and if, when we see forces like fire, the immensity of the sky, the beauty of the mountain, then we try to look for that someone. We need that someone so we can more or less face the threats of the forces of this planet. So man started to venerate or even worship the fire in the beginning, and then the mountains, the trees, because we need that. That is the biggest passion of man on earth. Considering he is too small, he's looking for his maker. There is that hunger that we were like thrown here. We don't know what to do. There are, we are surrounded by threats. That's why all our lives, our passion is seeking that somebody and natural religions in the beginning started nature, the sun, you know, most of the uh, oriental religions, and then worshiping force. That's why you hear a lot, may the force be with you. That's Buddhist. You know, or managing force, all their arts and defense like kung fu and all these are all uniting themselves with the force. Because we are desperate, seeking our maker. Then in um, Israel, God appeared as a guardian of the family of Abraham. And then he was a warrior. He defended his people. He established Israel. And then for the first time, Jesus came and said, God is not just a force. He is not just... Uh, from nature, he is a person. And closest to us, he is called Abba, Father. For the first time, it was Jesus who said that God is so close to answer the longing of the human heart. And all of us know that when he said that, when he said that, he's dead. Because the world was not ready for that. But we need a father to embrace in order to help us. There are breaking points in our lives that we cannot explain, like death, like illness, like terminal sickness, like accidents. We cannot explain this. We have no explanation. And so when these things come, we have nothing else. That is why we need a father. And so for our survival in this planet, we are only here like 100, 200 years ago, civilization. The um, latest um, 
skull discovered in Africa is only about 40,000 years. And heavy industry is only about probably, you know, French uh, Industrial Revolution in Europe, barely about 200 or 100. Heavy technology is only like 50, 30 years ago. But we already made an impact on this earth. The earth has been here 4.5 billion. Look at the math. It survived everything. Any destructive dominant surface inhabitant of the earth continue to destroy, continue to kill each other, the earth will make a move because it's self-correcting, self-balancing. And then it will recreate itself, reinvent itself, and then one by one this remains. We have seen that with the din dinosaurs and the other species. And then Ice Age, after the warm, the heat, ice that will cover any trace of this destructive inhabitant. It will only take 200 years for the earth to erase every human trace, and then it will recreate. That is why we hear a lot, <laughs> new heavens, and the new earth. And hopefully, we will still be there. But that is central to the theme of our faith in God. We need the Father to teach us, to discipline us, and to teach us to love, to work together, and to start settle with you know, uh, not too greedy, and it's actually greed that is eating this whole thing. Come back to our senses. We need God for our survival. We need to learn from Mother Earth. And now for our announcements and updates, we again are so blessed by God that as I was walking now here to enter the church, the building is taking shape. The tower is now, the shape is coming. And uh, all these magnificent uh, buildings that we have uh, to help people in their faith and to fulfill our mission here. This is very humbling, and we are um, so blessed to be part of this. And um, again, the, um, our, uh, it's in the news today in the paper, our um, food pantry is still continuing to serve, and thank you for the wonderful response. We... Uh, uh, according to the maintenance, they already delivered uh, three times the bags of food from the truck. So this is wonderful and beautiful. What a symbol of unity and faith that we are thinking of other people in this time. This is a blessing from God. Um, we are receiving uh, these bags of food. Um, please deliver them here in the portico. Physical donations uh, under the portico Monday through Friday between 8 a.m. and 12 noon. And then they are delivered there in the pantry. Um, we have received a donation of almost 24000 in monetary uh, contribution to the pantry. But as of now, we prefer people to, uh, to give physical donations because the people need the food immediately. 
so that there's always something available there in the pantry. Again, what a wonderful blessing. Um, we have been studying how we are operating now, and uh, we have discovered that in the last two weeks, um, our offertory has gone down by 44%. That is a lot, considering uh, how to maintain this uh, whole uh, machinery. So we encourage everybody to please use Faith Direct and um, continue the best you can to support our parish. And we are very grateful and thankful. I know these are difficult times, but that's, I'm reporting to you as your pastor and see what's going on in our parish. We are blessed with gift of music. Our music ministry um, has recorded spiritual songs for you to hear. We thank uh, Dawn, uh, Becky, and Jill. We are so blessed uh, with them. Please visit our website to hear the beautiful songs and look at the online bulletin for prayers and uh, up-to-date to information. We continue our candlelight prayer vigil. It's Sunday at 8 p.m. Perhaps play the song, Jesus Heal Us, from our music ministry as you gaze to the sky. Let us continue to serve as a reminder of the light of Christ and His love. Please stand for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess when baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we, your children, your family gathered here, increase our faith so we will learn from your love and learn the lesson from our Mother Earth. Listen to our petitions as we mention them. For all who seek truth and for all who guide truth seekers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil authorities and for all who work toward the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For scientists, health professionals, public officials, and all who are serving the common good in this difficult and uncertain time, that they will be filled with wisdom and understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the unemployed, and for all who struggle to make ends meet, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serve in the community, may they safely return home to their families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ken and Madonna Momet and the living and deceased members of the Ale family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died this past week, especially David Graham, James West, Sandy Agus, David Clark, Joseph Siegel, and for those who mourn them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners' intentions and those listed in our prayer needs book, as well as the, need, as well as the needs known only to God in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we make these petitions with love 
and complete trust in your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name and for the good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to praise you more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up 
for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, our patron Vincent de Paul, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver, deliver us, us from, from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, be peace in Christ, Father. Thank you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, roof but only say, say the word, word my soul shall, shall be healed. healed. Let us pray. 
Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptibility and glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.